All right, so today's talk is about temperature sensitivity and sex determination in turtles. With the major question, could climate change affect the ratio of male and female turtles born? So by the end of this lecture I and chat, I hope that you could answer that question for yourself. So we're talking about the western pond turtle. This is the only native freshwater turtle in California. It is a kind of a drab looking turtle. It's a basic brown, but it's got pretty little yellow striations on its neck. It spends most of its life aquatic in fresh water. It eats aquatically, but it spends some of its life, um, and particularly with nesting, on land. It moves over land to find places to nest or to get between different ponds, and it does estivation and bromination, which are fancy turtle words for hibernation in a cold-blooded species. So this species in California is listed as a species of special concern, meaning that it's not endangered, but its species is experiencing declines and is of concern. However, in Washington, this species is critically endangered. And so because California has some wiggle room, because our species isn't toast, we were able to get some permits to be able to study and better understand them so that hopefully we could use this data to help support Washington as they recover the species. So in Washington, the species was so critically endangered that every known western pond turtle was captured and brought into the zoo so that they could incubate them and study them in captivity. And when they incubated them, they could protect the eggs and make sure that more of them hatch and help protect them from predators to help the species recover quickly. But there was a problem. Most of the time when you incubate a species in captivity, you have nearly 100% success rates in hatching. But with this species, the more we incubated them, our success rates were terrible. 60%, 50%, 40% of the turtles were surviving. And we're wondering, should we even be incubating them? Or should we leave them in the wild to try to recover because at least their success rates of hatching in the wild are better? So our study helped inform Washington to be able to improve the hatching data and success. So my project um, was at Sonoma State University. Here I am with my graduate advisor. And we are studying incubating turtles at three... Uh, a variety of different temperatures. We incubated them at 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, and 31 degrees Celsius to see if we could better understand what temperature determines what sex and also how to improve their survivorship. After they hatched, I would monitor their growth for 10 months while they were raised at the San Francisco and Oakland zoos so that we could also understand how temperature of incubation impacts growth rate. And then at the very end, we had a very cool bonus that we got to release these healthy, large turtles after 10 months, and they had an improved survivorship, and we reintroduced them back to their native waterway. Eventually, we were able to add enough turtles to this native um, secret location in Lake County um, where they're protected that we were able to get permits to also release them at a few other sites. And they've now been released at the Presidio Park in San Francisco to help reintroduce the species to where it once natively was and can be monitored there. So why is this species in trouble? There's a couple of reasons. We've added predators to their world that they didn't evolve with. We added bullfrogs and bass. And I don't know if you knew this, but a bullfrog can be 15 to 20 years old and be about the size of a house cat, which is bonkers because when these turtles hatch and they're the size of a quarter, they're bite sized. This is like little bullfrog popcorn. And they can be eaten, several of them. A bullfrog can eradicate a whole nest of babies if they find them. So we ended up introducing a big problem to bullfrogs, sorry, to Western pond turtles by adding bullfrogs and bass to the population. And their population is struggling to recover. Another problem is that females like really well-drained soil. And you can find really well-drained soil to create a nest on the side of a road. So females often are nesting on the side of roads and they get hit by cars. 
So that ends up being a big issue with producing, um, helping, let's say like, that ends up being a big issue with the species um, surviving and it's incurring lots of losses to pregnant moms, which means that she's not able to reproduce and produce babies. So the focus of our talk today is going to be on incubating them and the sex determination that results from it. And what I mean by that is turtles are very different. Reptiles in general have a different mechanism of sex determination. Not all turtles and not all reptiles, but many reptiles use temperature-dependent sex determination. And that's different than what we use. Humans use a genetic mechanism of sex determination. We're endothermic. We're warm-blooded critters. So you spent your entire interutero development um, at your mom's body temperature. And so the only thing that determined your sex was whether you had an XX or an XY chromosome. So if you got an XX, you were biologically female. I'm talking about biological sex, not gender. Gender is social. Sex is biological. It's chromosomal and organ-based. So I am kind of narrowing the scope of this. So XX, biologically female, XY, biologically male. And what we see is that if you have the Y chromosome, that contains the SRY gene that ends up creating testes and produces a male. Testes create testosterone, so it creates the testosterone needed for the rest of development for a male. But in turtles and many other reptiles, and not even all turtles, but specifically the western pond turtle, if you bake them colder, they produce this SRY gene and produce testes. If you bake them warmer, they do not turn on this SRY gene. So they produce ovaries and become females. So what I basically said, in this species of turtle, you bake them warmer, you get girls. You bake them colder, you get boys. And not all species work like that. So the western pond turtle is type 1A. And we hypothesize that it was 1A because the European pond turtle, a close relative, has been well studied and is type 1A. So we hypothesize that they, as a close relative, they would have a similar strategy. You bake them warmer, you get girls. You bake them colder, you get boys. So the Washington based their study and their incubation off the European pond turtle. There's other types of incubation, um, sex determination, sorry, sex determination. And 1B is you bake them warmer, you get boys. 1A is you bake them warmer and you get girls. And then type 2 is if you bake them at a middle temperature, you get males. And so females develop at the lowest and highest temperatures. And so we were hypothesizing that the western pond turtle was 1A. And our research confirmed that. It confirmed a pivotal temperature. That at 29.4 degrees Celsius, you get 50% males and 50% females. So theoretically, if you bake them warmer, you get girls, and you bake them colder, you get boys. All right, so that's the pivotal temperature. This graph here took us years of my life to create, and it confirmed that they are, in fact, a type 1A strategist. You bake them warmer, you get girls. But the data produced something else that's really important. At 29 degrees Celsius, you get 50% males, 50% females, and you have a 92% hatching success rate. But just one degree Celsius warmer, so going from 29 to 30 degrees Celsius, um, to a non-scientist, that's 84 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. So just that tiny change in temperature dropped the hatching success from 92 to 68%. Holy smokes, going one more degree Celsius warmer our hatching success rate dropped to near 40%. Guess what temperature Washington was incubating their turtles at? 31 degrees Celsius. So yes, they were getting girls, but they had a terrible hatching success rate. So using this data, they were able to boop, boop, drop their temperature down between 29 and 30. They were able to get more girls than boys and have a substantially higher success rate which is really cool. It shows that the difference between the European pond turtle and the Western pond turtle, though small, there are some critical differences. 31 degrees Celsius is great for the European pond turtle to produce females that are fit and have a high hatching success, but it's not adequate for the Western pond turtle. 
So the critical question is here, could climate change affect sex ratio? Absolutely. But more than that, if we change, let's just say we add one degree Celsius, it's climate change, so it doesn't necessarily mean it's one degree warmer. It could be cooler. It could just have more variation. But let's, for this scenario, say we make them one degree warmer. If it's the species was a 1B strategist, one degree warmer means more males. In the case of the western pond turtle, we add one degree Celsius warmer, we get more females, but less of them are surviving, and I'm about to explain to you that they're slower at growing, which is a big problem. If they were a type 2 strategist, we'd get more females if it was potentially warmer. So if they were hanging around here and we went a little bit warmer, we'd get more females. So you can see how climate change could affect the ratio of sexes, but it could also affect the fitness of those offspring because of another piece of the data. I told you I monitored their growth for 10 months. So I did this with three years worth of turtles. So I don't know, a couple hundred turtles, I monitored their growth. And if you look at this graph, you can see that the fastest growing turtles are from the lowest temperatures, 26 degrees Celsius. And the slowest growing turtles are from the lowest temperature, sorry, the highest temperature, 31 degrees Celsius. So that goes back to here. Not, if we make them one degree warmer, yeah, we're still getting females, but fewer are surviving based on this statistic set. And they're slower to grow, which could have big implications for a guy who gets gobbled up by invasive predators when it's smaller. So if we warm things up, they grow, we produce females, great. But we produce slower growing females who are at greater risk of predation. And we produce a lower survivorship, so even fewer are hatching. That's a big problem. So my question to you is, could climate change affect the sex ratio? And ultimately, sex ratio and survivorship of turtles. You tell me. Thank you. And good night.